They are good. Good. <laughs> Got it. Uh, uh, pickled mushrooms are good, but when you want to eat them, honey mushrooms, so you have to make sure that they are well cooked because uh, they create some gastrointestinal distress to many people, even when they are cooked well. So you have to be careful with them. And if you get sick after uh, honey mushrooms, so it will pass. Uh, I went with this uh, eco club one time and uh, the leader of eco club and his wife uh, picked a bunch of honey mushrooms. They, they ate them and, uh, and then they were sick for half a day. So honey mushrooms are uh, treacherous. Now I'm trying to pass on. How do I get this thing away? Okay, here we are. This is an adult honey mushroom. So you can see it changes a little as it grows. Now, this is another mushroom which is edible, but I don't pick them. I would have to be really desperate uh, because it's nothing really that special. All these rusulas, there's a whole bunch of different uh, rusulas. And this was the first one I ever identified by the book, okay? I knew it was a rusula, but I took it home and I uh, got a spore print when you take the cap off and put it overnight on a piece of paper. And in the morning, you can look at the uh, spore print. The spores fall out and by the color of the spores, you can go to the book and uh, decide which group it belongs to. And then by what, what it looks like, you can identify or not uh, that it is a Rusula de Colorance, which common name is graying Rusula. So that means that if you injure it, this uh, bruising, it turns sort of gray, but it tastes like button mushrooms. So it's nothing really exciting. Now, this is uh, that uh, Rusula in slightly different color. It's quite variable. And this one is the same mushroom. Here you can see the gills and here it is attacked by a parasitic mushroom called uh, Hypomyces luteovirens. And these Hypomyces are the different species of it is the cause for the lobster mushrooms. So lobster mushroom, mushrooms in BC, they are sought and uh, dearly paid mushroom, which is supposed to be something uh, really delicious. I don't care for them. They are too crunchy. <laughs> to me, they are not really that good a mushroom. This is another one where that uh, uh, parasite is starting <laughs> under the cap. I have another... Uh, Somebody is calling us. They come in all colors. Rusulas are colorful mushrooms. This is a mushroom in Europe. It's uh, protected. Here it's not protected. We don't have any protected mushrooms here. Uh, but uh, when you see one or two in the forest, so you just leave them. But uh, they are some years when they are plentiful. And one year, actually two years, they were so plentiful that I picked a bunch and I, uh, I sauteed them on butter and uh, they are sweet. These uh, uh, club mushrooms, at least this, Clavaria delphus truncatus, truncated uh, tr uh, uh, club, could be common name. I found out that they are sweet. So I called them uh, dessert mushrooms. This is another uh, species they uh, tried because I found maybe two of them in my life. 
And that's another one. These you can find quite often, but they are small and uh, not worth it. Maybe if there's, they are plentiful, I can try them, but uh, uh, look, you know, they are maybe four or five millimeters thick. So it's like straws. Now here we have a mushroom, which doesn't have uh, uh, gills, doesn't have pores, doesn't have teeth, but this has this kind of cap and the spores are uh, uh, growing in, in these hollows here. And it's a morel. And uh, that's another mushroom which is highly appreciated if you like them. Uh, but for people uh, like me who are picky about mushrooms, uh, I don't <laughs> care for morels because to me, they are like a, a badly cooked octopus. Now, this is another one that's a black morel. Oh, a big mushroom. Uh, they, they have hollow, hollow stems. Actually, they are hollow or right into the cat. So you can try them more else if you want to, uh, if you can buy them, they are expensive. Uh, they grow even in Northwest Territories and Yukon and uh, native people uh, uh, collect them for, for money because uh, dealers buy them and they, they ship them to Japan or somewhere and they are quite expensive. So you can try them and decide if you like them or not. And this is a relative of uh, uh, one called false morel. They are smaller and uh, they grow usually on, on rotten wood and these are poisonous. So don't bother with this. That's another look at the false morel. And this is another, uh, they call these saddle fungus because most of them have this kind of a saddle, right? And uh, this crisp uh, saddle, uh, you can find in the forest, I found quite a few of them uh, in my lifetime, and uh, I don't even know if they are edible, I, I never tried, they are so rare if you find one, so what kind of meal would you have if, if they were edible? <laughs> I thought that here in Alberta, we have only, only one Amanita, and that's this one. You know, those beautiful red Amanitas are in Europe and in some other places, New Zealand and so on. But here, east of the Rockies, they are seldom really red. They are usually yellowish orange with a little red at the top, some of them. So I always thought there was only this Amanita muscaria, the, the fly agaric, fly Amanita. I tell you why it's fly amanita. But then I went into my uh, archive and all of a sudden I looked at this and that's another amanita. This one is poisonous, real poisonous. Am uh, amanita vaginata. So we have at least two species east of the Rockies uh, at this line of uh, Calgary West. Uh, so fly amanita, uh, there's a, uh, my grandmother told me, you know, you, you can believe it or you don't have to believe it. They were using amanitas. Uh, they just dipped them in milk and left them in, in a bowl and fly comes in and, and they uh, drink the milk or try to suck onto the mushroom and they die. You know, it's something like uh, uh, catching cockroaches on beer. I don't know if I can believe it or not. But uh, ever since, it must be from a long, long time, uh, it's called fly amanita. Here you have a family of fly amanitas right from Brack Creek, right, uh, right off the bridge there on the hill. And you can see that some of them are darker, some of them are paler. And some of them get quite big. This is a big biggie. 
you can see how big it is. Maybe it's a little perspective, you know, like fisherman showing the fish. No, but my arm is uh, bent, so it's not an exaggeration. You know, fish you always uh, show with your extended arm, so it looks much bigger. At least uh, uh, Gus told me. And here we get uh, milk caps, you have lactarius, pallidus, so whatever variety, you just have to look, look, look at this rusula, beautiful rusula uh, in red. Some of them are edible, some of them are inedible, not poisonous, but make you sick. Now here we have foliotas. Foliotas are the uh, mushrooms which are definitely decomposing wood. So it is uh, uh, at the foot of uh, sick trees or dead trees. And I must tell you that this tree must have been dead when I took the picture a few years ago, because when I got there this year, so this tree was broken <laughs> and fell down. So it's definitely, definitely it was decayed. And this is the one which we find every year on the mushroom forest in the same spot. Not exactly, so they move left and right. But this is the only foliota which is not on dead wood, but grows in the ground. That's why it's called terrestris. But it's as good looking as that uh, other one. And this is the one which you can find even in Calgary. I found it many times in uh, Carburn Park. This one is from, uh, from uh, Bear Creek, right at the beginning of the uh, tape of, of our foray. Uh, now this one looks like, uh, like a foliota, but it isn't a foliota. This is one of those uh, puffballs. So, when they are young like this and you cut them open, they are white inside and they have real flesh. And at that stage, all of these are edible. I never ate them, never tried, but they are edible. But eventually all that uh, flesh inside changes, ripens into spores. And then they break at the top somewhere and they spew those uh, spores you know, in a little three centimeter cap, there could be a billion spores. And that's a different uh, uh, color of a, a puffball. And another one, and they are quite, uh, quite attractive uh, little mushrooms. These are all young ones at the edible stage. Now, this is a lactarius, but it's not the delicious one. This one is called red, rufus. And this one is poisonous. So you don't want to uh, play with this one. You know, if you touch it, nothing happens. You can even lick your finger. But if you eat it, so you could get sick. This is just an important form of the same mushroom. These are a sort of jewel mushrooms, cystodermas. There's about uh, three, four species of them. They don't grow big, but they look so, so fairy tale like This is a, a reddish, uh, or, or orange, uh, reddish form uh, or species called cinnabarinum. Uh, cinnabar is the color. That's another with open cap. You can see the gills nicely, and you can see those hanging uh, remnants of the veil. Because when the cap is closed, so then when it's opening, so it tears that uh, uh, that part, and uh, some of it stays on the stem, and some stays on the cap. So. This is called the ring or veil, whatever. This is another one, and which is paler. So this one could be uh, Cystoderma amiantinum. Uh, I don't see much difference except the color in these. 
Now, this is a, a nice mushroom uh, you'll see in uh, the other picture, which used to be Clitocebe giba. It's a fragrant mushroom. Uh, I never smelled it, I just heard about it. Next time I find it, I will sniff it. But they changed the name and look at this, try to remember, just uh, uh, organize it in your mouth. In fundi bullisibe. Oh my God, I can't remember that. And this is from underneath. So it's a handsome looking uh, mushroom. Uh, and here we get to another color, uh, uh, purple. And uh, this is a, cort a Cortinarius, which has all kinds of really fancy colors. Uh, uh, I don't know if, it, if any are edible, but uh, there are so many species that it's the biggest confusion when you try to identify. Th this one is called mucosus because it's got this mucus on, on the cap. Lots of mushrooms have mucus on the cap. So uh, you don't uh, want to play with it. It's not really pleasant. And this is uh, this one is sanguineus, which is about blood. Now from this uh, uh, look uh, or <laughs> view, why sanguineus? Look at this. This is from under the cap. So this is uh, uh, cortinarius, short court. So <laughs> mushroomers say court. And here we get uh, some other tooth mushrooms. These uh, hidnellums have teeth under the cap. Uh, and there's a variety of these. Uh, this is the most sought after. Everybody wants to see one in their lifetime. And yeah, we find it at Bear Creek uh, almost every year. Uh, this year wasn't really that great yet, but uh, might be next week. Uh, this one is called uh, Devil's Blood Tooth, or uh, all kinds of variation on blood and teeth and, and devils and all this. For uh, mushrooms, it's a Hidnellum pecky. And this is uh, these uh, uh, drops of liquid which are exuded by the mushroom. That's an excess excess of moisture inside. You know, mushroom is probably 90% of water. So what comes out, this is called gutation, probably from the gut, so it's gutation. So uh, this is the most sought after, not for food, you wouldn't want to eat it. It's bitter, but it's so beautiful. It's a real jewel. And then this I found quite a few times at Berkeley. But uh, it's so, so little, you know, it grows uh, from a needle of a pine or it grows from a little cone uh, of a pine or, or spruce. And it's got teeth, see? So it's a little, and uh, most of them are eccentric. They are not around around the stem. Storm, they are just on most of the side of the stem. Uh, I don't even know, uh, it has a common name. Uh, I call it vulgar auriscalpium. It's a real fluke when you find it. Now, these are always on deadwood, Pluteus. And I, I took picture of these in Brown Lowry. And then I found them at uh, Bragg Creek uh, a week ago or two weeks ago, like this one. And uh, only later on when I was looking at it and trying to identify, uh, identify I said, oh, I, I found it a week before at Brown Lowry. So this is Pluteus. Uh, I don't even know if it's edible. And uh, uh, Coprinus, Coprinus are usually found on, on manure, but they are on deadwood as well. Uh, the name Coprinus uh, sort of suggests that it is growing on, uh, on manure. So this one is, uh, it looks like manure, okay. So this one, 
this one was on this one was uh, uh, just on on dead wood uh, this uh, mica mica coprinus nowadays you know they change the names so they call it instead of coprinus coprinellus which is a little coprinus and uh, now they call it something else uh, nobody can really keep track of uh, the name changes now this is a beautiful little one which grows on dead wood, uh, Satirella, uh, and I found uh, actually uh, when we were in Bragg Creek on at the first foray this year. So uh, Patrick on the first one found a whole uh, stump full of them. I don't know if I have them here, but we'll see. Then there's a. Uh, whole slew of these mycenas and they are tiny mushrooms you find them in in bogs or in wet places in moss they never grow bigger than maybe seven centimeters tall usually smaller but they are colorful and, and really good looking mushrooms this is a, a special one this mycena liana because it has a dimple in the cap and it's sort of granulated and it has, has a beautiful color now, uh, this one is polygramma. See, it's the similar thing uh, on dead wood. These are a little bigger with a, with a thicker stem, hygrocebe, and they are usually quite wet on the cap. I wouldn't say slimy, but definitely uh, uh, wet. Uh, hygrocebe, it has something to do with water seba is had uh, so uh, they call them wax caps which doesn't translate from higro but these are wax caps a flower sense is yellow and this is hygrocebe conica so you can see it's got conical cap and uh, this one is uh, prob uh, probably from Bragg creek no this one is from Bragg creek uh, they have variety of colors, yellow to, to red like this. But this one, I took the picture in the middle of Calgary. And you said, where can you find something like this in the middle of Calgary? Calgary, it wasn't this year. It was two years ago when we had wet summer. And it was under the Foothills Hospital uh, in that part, which is called Carl. Carl, somebody, Carl Baker of off, Leash area. But Gus called it Shagnessy Heights Park. Nobody knows it under that name. But right in there, in the middle of blue gentian, uh, prairie gentians, I found these two growing. So you can see you find them in your backyard. Gigrosi Baconica. That's another one. Uh, this one reminds a chanterelle, so it's called Agrasibe cantarellus. Uh, this one has a, a reddish uh, a stem, uh, which is a foot, so it's a hemantopus. Uh, that's another one, which is uh, almost uh, violet, Agrasibe subviolacea. Here, I don't even know. Two different species, most likely. Maybe it's one species. When it grows up, it will look like that. This is in the sphagnum moss. This is sphagnum moss in a bog in, in Bear Creek. Now, the same place. And these little guys, I couldn't get close enough. Uh, the cap is about two or three millimeters. So that stem is... Uh, you know, half a millimeter thin, uh, real tiny little things. This one, again, Bragg Creek, uh, that's uh, uh, related to the wax caps, Camarophilus. Uh, this is a lit little Lepiota, which is a nice little mushroom, but this one is poisonous. Some big ones in this family are edible, but this one is poisonous. And these lacarias are not big, but they are quite colorful. 
And this one is the basic one. Uh, you can see those gorgeous uh, gills, Lacaria lacata. They don't have common names. This is from the top, another couple. And uh, <clears throat> these are on dead wood. And these I found in uh, two years ago in Douglas Fair Sanctuary. So that's just across the uh, uh, water from uh, uh, Bonus Park. And this one, <laughs> it's an odd one. It's called, a uh, specific name is Vinicolor. So that means like, like uh, wine. Uh, so Burgundy wine, uh, wine. but the uh, generic name is the funniest uh, to me in, uh, in mushrooms. Chrum gomphus. Oh my, who named it Chrum gomphus? Then you have coral mushrooms. This is all growing around you. You just have to look and find it. Uh, this is, there's a variety of these and evidently even mycologists have problems identifying them. Some people eat some of them, but some of them are not edible or uh, mildly poisonous. So I don't bother. I remember in the old country when I was a kid, uh, people were collecting some of these species and ate them. And here we get to the uh, bracket or shelf uh, fungi, fungi, fungi. Anyway, they grow on dead wood mostly. And uh, they look like this. Uh, this is from the top. And underneath, again, that's, there's a variety. Some of them have pores. Some of them have them. Uh, uh, other variety of pores and gills as well. So this is the most common one. Uh, actually, this one is uh, sort of complicated. But if you look at a simple bracket like this, so that's what they look like. And this one is a common name is uh, artist conch. And uh, so it's not just a bracket or shelf. Sometimes it's called conch. And artist because you can draw onto these uh, pores. You can uh, do pictures on it. Uh, I have a book here by uh, one mycologist, professor of uh, mycology from California, uh, David Arora, and he has a picture there and somebody uh, wrote on it, somebody of his, Arora, I hope you didn't pick all my bolides. <laughs> so it can be used for messaging. Now, <laughs> you heard about magic mushrooms? which are still illegal in Alberta, I think. Uh, I don't know about BC, but uh, in BC, there's a different species where you, uh, uh, you can find them. I don't know if you can uh, possess them, but uh, I didn't even know that we had uh, this psilocybe uh, mushroom in Alberta. But last year when we were coming from this foray at Bear Creek, we got to a road and uh, this guy points these at me and said, what is this? So I looked at it, I say, you know, if I had to guess, I would say it's one of those uh, magic mushrooms, those hallucinogenic things. And he said, are you sure? I said, no, I'm not sure, but I took pictures and I took it home and, under these uh, needles, uh, there was some, uh, some, uh, they were some horse pucks. So, uh, psilocybe coprophila. So that means that it's a uh, manure loving. So, I looked at the uh, gills and by the description in the book, this uh, lightly violet gills and the cap like this with the edge of, uh, with the rim. So this is our magic mushroom in Alberta. I saw it only once in my life and evidently it's not that hallucinogenic, just mildly. 
And this you can find on uh, fallen down tanks of trees, Gleophilum sepiarium, uh, quite colorful, uh, Pezizas, these cup mushrooms. Uh, they are sort of jiggly when you touch them. Uh, they are pro probably edible, but I never tried. You don't find enough to try. Now, these are just cute. They have these eyelashes on the rim. I don't know if I have a, a, a real, uh, let's have a look if I can. Oh, look at that. You can see the eyelashes. So this is eyelash mushroom uh, or fungus. And uh, in Latin, it's scutellini, uh, scutellinia, which uh, means like little shield. Uh, so it has nothing to do with eyelashes. But uh, when I look at this, so these are fruiting bodies of a, uh, <clears throat> of a slime mold. I don't know which one, but I never noticed that until I magnified it here. So we have to get it back to normal to move on. And this is another jelly, jelly mushroom. Uh, Dacrymyces, uh, which is quite common, you can find it on, on dead wood. And this one we found in uh, Brown Lowry two weeks ago. And there was a bunch of them, but I, I, I kept this one. It looks like fire. And uh, that's another of these jellies, uh, or uh, yeah, jelly, jelly fungus, Calocera cornea. There's a couple of species available. The other one has long prongs just in yellow. Actually, this one is usually in yellow. This one, because of something, uh, it caused her to, to get colorful tips, probably some chemical in that wood. It looks like it was a little burnt. And I don't know if we magnify it. You know, these little white specks could be something else too. <laughs> So I guess I have to magnify lots of my pictures to find different species, which I didn't intend. Now, here we have an, uh, another bunch of cup mushrooms. This is one species, and which is some uh, uh, species of that uh, uh, eyelash one, but these eyelashes are not really eyelashes. So this one is from Pennsylvania, uh, uh, first described found in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. And this yellow one is uh, by Sporella citrina. So uh, it has probably double spores or something. And because uh, citrina, because it uh, looks like lemon. And uh, this is what I found at Bread Creek uh, two weeks ago, under a branch. So that's another by Sporella citrina. Now look at this. Uh, this is a mycena of some sort, and it's parasitized by another fungus, which is called Spinellus fusigen. And I found it only once, and it was at the time when I had just a basic camera, so I couldn't really go closer to, to see it better, but maybe at least you can see that each of those stems of that uh, uh, parasite has a spore head, uh, sporangium. So uh, that's something really special as well. Now, this is that <laughs> blue-green one I, I mentioned at the beginning. And uh, that was, again, before I had a decent camera. So that was the best picture I ever took which is in this gate. Uh, that, this one is a little better, but again, nothing to really uh, be proud about. And uh, you will ask, uh, what is this? So imagine this is our uh, provincial, official provincial lichen. So first, you can find it as this uh, blue, bluish spray paint. And at that time, 
it has a common name spray paint with all these pink things. And when uh, the conditions are good for, uh, for fruiting, so it starts growing these uh, fruiting bodies. And uh, then it's called fairy spook. And uh, some people would like to find it and see it in real. And it's quite common. I wasn't noticing it uh, until I found out that uh, 15 people, uh, 1500 people voted it as a uh, provincial lichen. So uh, every time I go in the forest, I find it somewhere. You can find it even in Douglas Fir Sanctuary. Now, this is another fruiting body of a lichen. It was considered a mushroom of its own, Omphalia, because it has this navel uh, depression at the top. But then they found out it's a fruiting body of a lichen. So they changed it and call it now Lichen Omphalia and like an umbel umbeliformis. And uh, it's not that. Uh, uh, rare either. You can find it uh, if you know what you're looking at. This one is from Brown Lowry two weeks ago. So you can see that navel here uh, and uh, umbel of, of the cap and, and this is the stem. And it grows from this kind of undefinable lichen. And here it's not uh, corals of the sea. These are the lichens I found. If you know where Ing, Ing's mine is, when you go west from Bear Creek uh, towards uh, Elbow Falls. So on the slope above that, uh, uh, that uh, Canyon Creek, they are formations, beautiful formation, formations of uh, rocks, which is mostly sandstone and uh, only a rough uh, uh, compound stuff. And if you go into the uh, Aspen forest above it, it's quite steep there, but all these rocks are grown over. Here they are so many species of lichens. I even got names for them. I won't bother the, uh, you with them because I can hardly remember them. But look at this fire lichen. It even has a name after fire, igneous something, igneous something. Uh, and this is some uh, uh, fissia, and oh my God. And uh, that's another piece. This is all from the same place. This is uh, a rhizoplaca, a rhizoplaca chrysoleuca, uh, another beautiful one. Like, when you look at it, all these things here in the picture look really huge, but they are not. They are really small. Those uh, largest ones could be maybe four millimeters. So you have to look at them. You better have your magnifying glass with you. Look at this rhizoplaca. It's got the blue green, uh, <coughs> blue green color. Uh, this was called melanophthalma because uh, this is almost black. I guess some of, some of these apotesia, these fruiting bodies on lichens are called apotesia. So these orange apotesia, and blue-green apotesia, and all kinds of apotesia. And why do I have a foliota terrestris here? I don't know, because this is probably what I added uh, later on. So we talked about these decomposing foliotas. Oh, this is a story, okay? So uh, actually this is Bragg Creek, this creek here. And uh, behind me uh, in the hill is my son's property. He has a house there and uh, steps going down to the 
flats to the creek. And then you have to get down to the creek, a deep, steep uh, uh, bank, on my side, even steeper. And I said, look at this. This looks like this foliota, which grows on poplars, foliota populnea. And how do I get there? Uh, that creek was quite deep here. So imagine I'm 77. So I, uh, I got onto this uh, tank, uh, uh, sitting, sitting, and I was shimming left and right, uh, all this until I got here. And I took pictures of it and I said, oh, I cannot shimmy backwards. How could I do it? Because you have this bark in here and that shimming uh, is really difficult on it. So I <laughs> let myself down onto this bank here, which was about six feet, maybe seven feet. So it wasn't that bad. And uh, then I took pictures from the other side. So you see that I'm not lying. And uh, then I said, how do I get back? And <laughs> so I went along the bank and there was a little dam down there. And uh, for from pebbles to this size. So I got on it and of course it was slippery and I slipped and uh, uh, one of my uh, uh, shoes filled with water. I was up there up to my knee, but I got over and fortunately it was that close to the uh, Carl's deck. So uh, I could empty it and get home. Okay, so that's an adventure. And this is a beauty which we found, uh, which Patrick found on our first foray this uh, in uh, end of August. And uh, at the time I didn't have the name, but this is that Satirella hydrophila. And the whole, uh, whole uh, stump was grown over with it. This is just one group, which, is, which looks like a unit. And this is the view from underneath. I'm proud of this picture, but imagine what happened to me when I got there. I had my camera with my macro lens. And uh, so I tried to press the shutter and it says, uh, battery exhausted. And I said, oh, I have another battery in, in the pocket here. So I put it in and it wouldn't even come up that spare battery exhausted itself. So I was without macro lens. So I had to pull out my pocket camera. Uh, it's a Sony as well. So these pictures are with my pocket camera even this one and i'm proud of this. this this is a beautiful picture as far as i'm concerned even little mushrooms with a one centimeter large or one and a half centimeter large cat can be quite colorful this is from brown lowry two weeks ago uh, this is another colorful one uh, you know, there's no common name for Rhodocolibia butyracea. Uh, that's another, uh, you know, this Trofaria, this is Hornemony, but we don't have that other one here, which is, uh, I don't remember the last name, but it has a blue-green cat with white specks like this, beautiful. And of course, scaly uh, stem. Uh, that's a beautiful stuff area, but we don't have it here in this area. Here you have the bracket mushrooms, even a reddish one. And, you know, I was concerned about this red color. I took this. And then when I got home, I noticed that I have this purple crust mushroom, which I always wanted to see, and I just ignored it because I like this red bracket. So that's a chondrostereum purpuraceum, pur pur purple, <laughs> purple crust fungus. This is another one. 
now uh, on the last uh, for a a week ago, I was saying, you know, there's this herisium growing here. We found it once, and uh, I haven't seen it since. And then <laughs> one of the people says, hey, come here. So we had to go back about 20 meters, right behind the bridge, under the uh, uh, fallen rotten trunk. He says, is, it that, is that it? And there was a beautiful herisium, which is called uh, lion's mane. And uh, they say, here it is. This is what he found. And they say it's good against uh, uh, some mental problems and so on, depressions and uh, so on. I don't believe in those things. You know, you find it uh, three times in your lifetime. So how can you feed on it regularly? So this is close. So it's coralloides. So that means it reminds of a coral. Look, it's beautiful. Now, there are several species of this in the uh, in US and in BC somewhere. Instead of these corals, you have these long teeth. It's a tooth mushroom, yes. And uh, that one has a different name. It's a uh, Herisium coralloide, uh, coral, uh, Americanum. Now, don't confuse Herisium with Hieracium. Hieracium is hawkweed. This is another, uh, uh, this is cauliflower, uh, cauliflower fungus, which I found at Bear Creek uh, a couple of years ago. Brought a piece home and ate it. Uh, it was, it tasted like cauliflower. Cauliflower is uh, easier to get. And here you get to, uh, slime molds and uh, these are fruiting bodies of slime molds so this one is called wolf milk so if you press this ball it will burst open and out of uh, it comes this thick pink or reddish like you see here uh, liquid not really runny really thick so this is an early stage of this wolf milk. Liko gala uh, means liko is wolf, uh, gala is for milk and epidendrum that it grows on the tree, epidendrum. And uh, this is behind Carol's house uh, on, on a stump. So this is the later stage ripening. There you can see leaking at uh, insides. And eventually it will fill with spores. And when it bursts open, so black spores are falling out. This is an early stage of uh, wolf milk. And uh, if uh, we want to get out of our backyard, so there are uh, lots of our stuff you can find even at the equator. So in Ecuador, I found quite a few mushrooms, which uh, we have here. They grow there as well. But they have some things in tropical areas, which we do, do, do not have here. And this is one of those stinghorns, which is uh, uh, the name Staheliomyces synctus. Synctus means uh, choked up here. So I found this by a real fluke. Uh, and uh, I, I was really surprised. Look at that. And uh, this is a stinky uh, part, uh, which is uh, quite adhesive. No, not really. No, it's just slimy. And uh, the fly go uh, to get there. This is another one which uh, you can find around Calgary. Uh, no, not this species, but uh, these uh, uh, earth stars. We have these white ones. I found them at uh, Douglas Fair Sanctuary. 
but this one is uh, rubropusillum, so it's a small one, a reddish color. This is, this is the uh, embryonic one before it splits open into this. And in here, they will be little uh, bodies which contain the spores. So this is uh, one from Ecuador. And uh, these are cup mushrooms, uh, mushrooms which grow in tropical areas. Now, uh, I found out that uh, these tropical ones are very similar all around the globe. So what you find in Ecuador, you can find in uh, tropical Africa or in tropical Asia and in tropical Australia. So this is one of those smooth uh, coquinas uh, uh, from Ecuador. And uh, this is a hairy one. So you can see it grows on, on dead wood. And this is about it. So I can un unshare because un unless you want to, unless you want to see some things again. <laughs> so maybe you can ask questions. Well, thanks, Carl. That was great. Uh, I hope I, just... I didn't bore you. No, you're okay. Yes, I'm, I'm finished yeah. uh, with the pictures and, and now I opened uh, to any uh, inquiries or questions or whatever. Sure. Um, so what we'll do then is if people have a question or comment, uh, they can put it into the chat box, just type it in and press enter. And then those questions will pop up. And then I can relay the uh, questions over to Carl. So if you have any thoughts, uh, we got a couple of uh, nice uh, comments about your, your photography. You must have a really nice camera to be able to take some of those close ups. Uh, uh, technology. You know, I found out when I go into my pictures that uh, I took some really good pictures even with my primitive, more primitive cameras. But uh, now I have this little Sony HX80, which is a really pocket camera. Uh, now I can show you how, how small it is. So it has a zoom and you can get quite close, not really that close, but you could see on those uh, late pictures that it will take really good close pictures. So this is my workhorse for scenery and everything. And then I have this uh, Sony a uh, Alpha 6000. I bought it second hand and it's got so many features. Even that little one has so many features that you cannot know all of it. You are learning all the time. But I bought a macro. Macro 30 millimeters, which on this size of the camera is actually like 45 millimeter lens. And I can double it digitally to 90, I could do it digitally even more, but it doubled digitally to 90. I don't see any, uh, any difference between prime lens and digital image. So I have this flexibility and I use this camera now carrying in my uh, bag just with the macro. And if I have to take a, a scenery, I take it with the little camera. Perfect. So it's not really that, uh, uh, that specialized. The thing is that, uh, you know, when you get real close, you have to watch your light because sometimes you are shading these little things. And for that, I have, uh, I have this thing, uh, you can buy, it. it takes two AA batteries and you can vary the intensity of the light. So uh, with a flash, you can shade your stuff with your lens. So you don't get that light. 
But with this, you can go from any side you want. Oh, great idea. A couple of questions there, Carl. Um, how did you develop your love for mushrooms and how long have you been interested in mushrooms? <laughs> that, that's funny. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I come from uh, Czech Republic, from Eastern Bohemia, and everybody goes mushrooming. So my parents took me mushrooming when I was a little kid. And you learn what you should pick and what you shouldn't. And I have to say that my parents were very conservative. And they weren't picking uh, all kinds of stuff, only a really good stuff, which you cannot really make mistakes. And so over 70 years of experience, <laughs> it sounds funny. Uh, and uh, of course, when I got into photography here in Canada, so I was taking pictures, uh, you know, botany. I was going with Gus and uh, then sharing the duties with Gus for botany. And of course, I, I liked the mushrooms and I saw the variety. And if you take pictures, so you, ha you have to find out what you are taking pictures of. At least I have to. I can see in that uh, uh, group I created uh, 41,000 people, and uh, most of them don't really care what it is, <laughs> but uh, I do care. So I have, uh, I have books here. I have at least uh, 16 different books. Not that I'm using all of them, but I'm using at least three, four, four basic books for mushrooms. And I know, I know for sure, that even if I give it a name, that it's only tentative. You know, I wouldn't, uh, uh, on something I'm not sure of, uh, say, oh, let's try to eat it. No, 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 no. No way. Because when I was a kid, actually, that was later on. When I was a kid, I had a friend, and he lived with his grandparents. And his grandfather was into nature. He was a hunter and he was picking mushrooms and he knew everything. He was even uh, um, making wine out of uh, any berries and dandelions. And at his late age, he picked something which he thought was okay. And he poisoned the whole family and his daughter died. So, uh, you know, they are cultures where they pick mushrooms and they pick a wide variety. And some of them are easy to mistaken for something else. And that's why in countries like in Eastern Europe and, and France and Italy, uh, you have so many mushroom poisonings because uh, uh, people are not critical enough uh, for their uh, knowledge. Mushrooms, you know, what we have here, uh, they are not many of them which could kill you, but uh, lots of them which could make you really sick. And they say that uh, these uh, death angels or whatever, uh, Amanitas, they taste good, at least people <laughs> who got poisoned and survived. They say, oh yeah, they taste good, but nothing happens for a couple of days maybe. And then third day, your liver's gone and your kidneys are gone and you're gone. So, uh, you know, you have to be critical. And if you eat something suspicious, and on the second day, you don't feel really good, you better run because uh, they have some extracts from milk thistle. It's produced in uh, Germany and it's shipped to all these uh, countries with high mortality. 
And they say, if you catch it early, that extract can save you. Interesting. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a sort of fairy tale thing, <laughs> these mushrooms, mysterious. This David Arora book, look how thick it is, uh, is called Mushrooms Demystify. And he lists here or talks about about 2000 species from North America only. Now, when you go to internet, you can uh, get estimates anywhere from half a million to 5 million species of mushrooms estimated. <laughs> you know, 500,000 uh, to 5 million. Uh, and we know uh, uh, described of them are maybe 10%. So, you know, you can find much new, new species all the time. A couple of questions there, Carl. Uh, one is what type, what was the brand of your macro lens? What type of macro lens were you using? It's a Sony. A Sony. Sony, uh, 30 millimeter. You know, when you go to 50 millimeter, which would be uh, 100 uh, millimeter on, on, a, on this camera. Uh, so then you are looking at 600 bucks. But uh, if you go for 30, so it's only 300. So it depends on your budget. Mm, I would imagine. I couldn't justify 600 bucks for a lens, which on top of it is really heavy and clumsy. My, uh, my son uh, offered me, oh, I'm uh, going, I'm not taking it with me, with me, just to use my 90 millimeter Sony G uh, macro. I put, put it on the camera. I took two pictures with it and I said, no way I'm going to bother with this log. It's heavy, it's clumsy, and uh, I'm in the terrain, and uh, uh, I'm not going to carry a heavy tripod and uh, spend half an hour on one mushroom. This way I can uh, get decent pictures and uh, do a lots of them. Perfect. A couple of more questions before we wrap up. One is, what is, uh, do you recommend a local book, like a book that's good for local mushrooms? Uh, there's no, uh, there's no real choice here. Uh, there's this old book by uh, Helen Schalkweig Barenson, and they published it again. I have it here with a different co uh, cover, but inside it's exactly the same book. They are uh, drawings, paintings. Okay, the paintings are good. I I would prefer uh, uh, photographs like uh, in in the one for the West by Bern. Uh, but even if you get this one, this west, uh, east, or east, I mean. So it's quite usable even here. So both of them are good okay. together. Great, and I'm thanks. still using a California book, which is excellent, but uh, you know, we don't get lots of California stuff here. Okay. Um, you mentioned uh, you, you were a certain age. So one question was, obviously, are you, you was wondering if you'd ever been poisoned. No. No. I've, I've never been even sick. <laughs> no. But Lots of experience. My, my son, my older son. Uh, yeah, this is an interesting thing. You know, I mentioned that uh, uh, oyster mushrooms, uh, cultivated ones, are from a sterile environment. So they cannot catch anything. So uh, he can eat uh, cultivated oysters without any problem. 
but uh, we collected some of these uh, uh, oysters in a while. And I remember when I was there, he ate uh, them. Not that he would eat a bunch of them, but in a meal. And he felt sort of, uh, he was complaining that he was sort of sick for a couple of days and then it was gone. But uh, uh, last year, uh, he collected them again and he ate them and he got really sick and he got this uh, 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 pa, 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 uh, what's the name of that uh, gland? Uh, uh, oh. When you get cancer of it, so you're gone. Prostrate. Pro not prostate. No, no, no. <laughs> the other one starting oh, with P. Pancreas. Uh, pancreas. Pancreas. He got pancreatitis. And the only explanation was that it was from those wild oysters. Now, uh, I didn't know that before, but uh, uh, I found it in one of the books uh, on biology and all this. Oysters are known as predaceous mushrooms. And uh, so they, uh, they go on uh, uh, trees on the bark, just attached. So mycelium is spreading under the bark and on the bark. And uh, uh, they are nematode worms uh, present there. And these myceliums can attack those worms, uh, envelop them and absorb them. So they are predaceous. And the only explanation to me, of course, this is a, a scientific anecdote, right? When I say it, uh, it would have to be proven. But the only explanation is that uh, these uh, uh, wild oysters, while predating these nematodes, are creating some kind of a substance which some people cannot tolerate and they can uh, get sick from it. So Philip now on doesn't eat wild oysters. He eats uh, uh, cultivated what from the store, but not wild. So they are odd things with mushrooms. Mm, yeah. So uh, Carol, I think that brings us to the end of uh, your presentation. Um, there's got lots of nice comments about uh, the beautiful photographs and all the interesting information that you have provided. And um, so I, I really would like to thank you on behalf of Nature Calgary for stepping in at short notice to be able to, to show us all your great images and, and the stories that relate to them. So uh, I really appreciate that. Um, so thank you very much. My pleasure.